This is Italy's largest national park. It's 1,960 kilometers of wilderness that spans both the Basilicata and the Calabria regions. It's a land of extremes from soaring snow-capped peaks to deep ravines and wind-blown plateau. Dave and I have stopped for a break at the hill town of Latronico. Whilst only a kilometre or so from the autostrada, it's a tightly knit commune dating back to the Middle Ages, although the name of the place has Greek connections. Many parts of this park are quite remote, with difficult roads to negotiate. The villages here have fiercely maintained their traditions and independence, none more so than the two Albanian settlements buried deep in the mountains around 30 kilometers away. We've left Basilicata and have crossed over into Calabria, but still in the Polino National Park. Our destination is the mountain town of Lino Borgo, where we're going to stay the night in a hotel. We're using a sat-nav that came with our rental car. And today, at least, it's behaved itself. But there again, there aren't many roads for it to get wrong here. We drop our bags in our room and get changed. It's early enough to see some of the town and take a short walking trail before our evening meal. Such a grand little house. Yeah. Once. Why on earth is it deserted now in such a beautiful place? Yeah, it's gone. No idea. We've only strolled a couple of hundred yards and proud villagers open their roadside chapel for us to see inside. Dave and I have searched the internet for a suitable trail and we found this one recommended by Paola Manuli. We don't have a lot of time on this trip, so this path seems to fit the bill. It promises some lovely landscape as it follows the gorge of the River Lau. The stream below is a tributary of this fast-flowing mountain river and alongside you can see wash houses which have been sympathetically restored to become a feature of the town. Above is the Castello, dominating the entire Lao Valley. Now a ghost town, it was abandoned in 1982 when damaged beyond repair by a severe earthquake. It's still possible to visit by taking a path from Lino Borgo, but not for us today. I think this is the main street and it's just getting narrower and narrower so I don't know how many cars can get down here. We're heading for the main square. And it's about 30 degrees, which is getting Yeah, pretty it's warm. <laughs> Today is a Saturday and the commune is preparing their religious celebration for this evening in the church square. The town is also well known in the national park for white water rafting. The Lao Gorge is not far from here and we can walk there. The trail is quite young, established as recently as 2007, and was part of a larger trail that once led to the sea. After thorough research a few years ago, the local middle school here put up information boards to help visitors understand the environment better. current gets stronger. The 
community have built this wooden belvedere as a shelter and picnic spot, and we have a better view of the amazing Italia viaduct, which spans the gorge. When it was opened in 1974, the 260-metre-high bridge was the tallest in Europe and second-highest in the world. Even today, with a bit of recent restoration, it still appears in the top 40. Now, what about those white water rafters? Well, although we can't access the gorge directly in the time we have, we've been donated some footage by Gianfranco Viani, who rode through only days after us. Ecco il ponte. I don't think you would see me doing that, but Dave says he might one day.